Hello, gorgeous Leo Pride, and welcome to February 2021. Always an interesting month for the Leo Pride. I hope the beginning of this year has been treating you well, as we have been on a very steep learning curve with the new energies all working in the opposing sign of Aquarius, and admittedly, Leo's. There's a huge emphasis on Aquarian energy, especially this month. We have a Mercury retrograde in Aquarius, Venus in Aquarius most of the month, um, Jupiter, Saturn, Sun moving through Aquarius. This is, <laughs> and a new moon in Aquarius as well. This is, you know, so there's a huge emphasis on the opposing sign to Leo. And a lot of times that's interpreted in astrology as a challenge, as something that is enervating, that is grating. And I don't tend to agree with that perspective. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I don't tend to agree with that perspective because I think we learn so much from all the other signs. A goal in our lives isn't to just like crystallize down more and more until we're so obsessed with what we think we are. It's to, to be curious about who we are becoming. And when we have energy in our opposing sign, we get to get curious about who we are beyond the definitions of who we say we are, right? We often like to come up with like, this is my personality. This is who I am. This is how I do things. And while it's good to have some self-knowledge and some respect around your boundaries and what you really prefer, it's also good to have an open mind. And what what all this energy in Aquarius helps us do is it helps us get curious about how we are changing. It also helps us get curious about our relationships, about how we connect, and it can even boost and bolster those things. You know, Jupiter in the house of relationships is a great thing. Saturn helps you build those relationships. Venus is going to make it flirtatious. Mercury retrograde is going to help you to review and refine and understand what it is that you're really wanting in life. So here's the thing. I had a note that just came in for me so strongly when I thought about Leo's. In fact, it made me like hop into this reading like a couple days sooner than I actually was kind of loosely planning on doing it because here it is. You're already who, like you're already your next iteration of self. And part of what February is gonna do, it's not something that's over there. Like sometimes I think we think, well, in six more months when I've done this, this, and this, then I'll be that person. Then I'll have these these skills or these knowledge, this knowledge under my belt. But actually, they're right here right now. And part of what February's work is gonna be, especially as we're doing that Mercury retrograde review work, and I will be doing a Patreon video on this specific Mercury retrograde, because it's quite powerful, um, if you're curious about that, um, how to work with that, how to review, is just learning how to work with what you have, learning the rules, learning the lay of the land, figuring out how things work in this landscape of who you are now. And sometimes that can feel a little disorienting, a little discombobulating, right? To be like, oh, okay, um, how do I move through the world with this person, with this being that I am, understanding that I'm learning so much about this new chapter and this new version of myself? Um, we're always we're always growing into our next version, but there are times when it's really like those growing pains are very real, where you feel you feel a difference in how you're connecting to your body, you feel a difference in how you're connecting with reality, you know, and and how you interact with the different elements of the day, and when those times come, which I'm kind of feeling for February, it's a time to kind of acknowledge that that's what's going on and be kind to yourself as you're learning all these new things. And of course, this month is really interesting too. It's a very transformative time for Leos every year because we go through Aquarius season, that mirror season, that reflective season. And this year is extra potent because everybody's hanging out in Aquarius this month. It's like a big party. Um, but also we move into Pisces season at the end of the month and Venus moves there. We have a full moon in Virgo and Pisces season is transformation time, right? This is about shedding a skin. It's about getting really intimate with our hidden selves. And so this is a very tender and I think very personal month in the year, these next couple of months for Leos, but it can be used really, really efficiently, if you're willing to get curious and explore in there, right? Which I know Leos are, so I'm not too worried about it. But I think sometimes when we think that we're taking a step back or, we're, or we are 
we're behind or we're not where we think we need to be. We're actually moving forward. It's just that culturally, we've been trained that these steps that we take in the hidden and in learning new rules, and not even new rules, just like new ways of moving through the world. Two of wands, baby. Mm. It doesn't look the way it looks like when you get an assignment at school and it's like point A, point B, point C. You write it up, you turn it in, you're done. It doesn't look like that, right? So it's part of the navigating, I think, is just accepting that <laughs> becoming and changing and growing and getting intimate and acquainted with who you are now is not this nice linear uh assignment that you just do and you're done you know it's something that we it's circular it's circuitous ten of swords there's the shedding of a skin right there um i was thinking about this too like the the closest like personal story i have to like this kind of process is i remember <laughs> just this process of learning on the job which is life right but i remember when i was around 21 or 22 i got a job at a restaurant and i had never done restaurant work before then i'd done other types of jobs but not restaurant work but i got hired as a front of house manager like they were just like here <laughs> and you know i remember my first shift you know i had to like take care of you know like oversee the staff um, take care of like all these things. And I had never worked in the restaurant industry and it was like, I'm in charge now, like, oh my gosh. And I thought, how am I allowed to be doing this right now? And of course it, it was fine, but there was just this feeling of like, shouldn't there be like a training course first? Like queen of pentacles, shouldn't like I have some other experience? Am I allowed to just step into this role and be the person telling everybody where to do, where to go and uh, what order to do things in? And yet there I was. And, um, you know, as soon as I relaxed a little bit more, I did really well in that job, four of swords. But anyway, I think there's sometimes that can happen just with our own transformation too. Is like, we, we are this person, we are in this beautiful body, we are experiencing the world and connecting with it. And it's like, what, how do I do any of this stuff? So that's a big part of February for you. Now let's look at these cards because a lot of this has to do with integration. I'm noticing with the cards that Leo is getting this month, there's a lot of integrating energy as well as big future vision plans. So we start right off two of wands, right? Which I love. I mean, this is one of my favorite, favorite cards. Uh, it's so, this is about being imaginative, being open, being in that sense of knowing, right? Knowing that big things are coming, even if you can't see them from here, right? And just being willing to stand at this threshold, right, is a huge part of the piece of the puzzle. It's really the essential piece of the puzzle is being willing to stand here at this threshold, be open, have your heart open to where you are going next. Because one thing I think will happen, especially with all this energy in Aquarius, is that you can actually access, um, you can actually access your bigger vision of life using this energy. Aquarius is very good for this and you have a unique connection to Aquarius. It's always going to be your counterpart. And so therefore you can really leverage this energy to get to like understand and perceive your bigger picture. And I think that's what two of wands is speaking to. Now that doesn't mean you're doing all of that this month or that you even have to worry about all of that this month. That's going to be one of the ingredients this month. And I really love that. Like get, comfortable with the bigness of your future get comfortable with all you're going to learn all you're going to embrace all the different ways of moving through the world that you are going to be navigating in the coming year get comfortable with that right and then come back here to integrate I think this Mercury retrograde may feel kind of personal for Leos. Now that I'm sitting here and talking about it and I'm thinking about all this heavy hitting energy in a fellow fixed sign like this especially your opposing sign and Mercury retrograde working all month, um, all the way till the 20th of February. So those first three weeks of the month, it's a time of reflection. It's a time of integration. It's a time of healing, understanding and releasing, and maybe even facing into some of your fears or some of the places in yourself where you undercut this bigness right here, right? 
Leos always get teased for being big personalities and wanting a lot of stuff and wanting attention. But what I've found with Leos in general is like that reputation for being so big and bold is kind of like intimidating and overwhelming. And most Leos feel even kind of guilty for being that big, bold, beautiful thing. And they tend to want to kind of shrink themselves a little bit because it's uncomfortable to want the big bold vision but that's what the two of wands is asking and this healing in preparation process is having you look at that as well you know ten of swords to me yes it's the end of a cycle right that's why i love ten of swords anything that has been maybe really hard or challenging over the last season of life since leo season let's say you know anything that has been maybe asking a lot of you or filling you with questions is closing out here during this month. And there's so much grace in that, so much relief in that. And it, I think it is important to take a moment, right, to not only oh, be big vision, right, and look out, but also to let yourself release. And I think it's gonna be kind of a, a circular conversation all February between these two. And that is totally natural. I think that's a really natural part of morphing. Now, you also have these two very soothing cards. Um, this is the order they came out in. The Queen of Pentacles and the Four of Swords. And man, do I love these cards, because these cards are all about really nourish yourself, you know, take good care of yourself however you can. I mean, move your body a little bit, get some, get some water, you know, eat foods that make you feel good, you know, nourished, like do whatever it is that you can to really take care of your body, right? Get rest. Be, it's okay if you need to take some time for yourself, maybe more time than you would normally take Maybe, you know, normally you're somebody who's very social and, and wants to move around in the world. And maybe even th those types of Leos right now may be feeling more hermity. I'm a little bit more of a hermity Leo, but that's a Virgo moon situation <laughs> going on there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the queen of pentacles here is about nourishment. It's about getting your root system right. So when we're talking about this two of wands, right? We want to have a good root system functioning so that we can expand into that bigness and that boldness and that juiciness. And you are going to be getting hits of that all month. And there's going to be this reminder that that future is here now because all the things that you're doing, the way you're treating your current self is absolutely the future as well. It's that weird thing with time where it's like here and now is there as well. And then you have four of swords. Rest. That's it. I've nicknamed this card like a while ago, the nap card, because it's like you got to just let yourself incorporate. Don't be spinning news stories or running around like crazy. Just incorporate. You know, Four of Swords is known as kind of the oasis card. If you're trekking across the desert and you have a big journey, it's that moment where you're at the watering hole and you have a cold drink of water and you just rest. And I look at the territory you're traversing in February. It's big, it's bold, it's juicy, it's wild. It's really wrapping your mind around the bigness and the boldness of the vision. And that requires extra rest. Um, I think I find that, you know, the more we embrace our path and we're, the more we're connected to our souls, obviously the less we're going to feel like enervated and tired and struggling but also like the more we're going to cherish rest the more we're going to notice that it's a place where we can actually get a lot more forward motion right and it's going to be that counterintuitive thing where it's like as you slow down you're actually speeding up so the less you can feel like you've got to like rush through this month or like make things happen the more things are going to happen, right? And that's kind of the fun unspoken rule of this month for Leos specifically. Now, I am going to pull a card from my Animal Totem Tarot. This is a beautiful deck um, to work with. And we're going to see what our final message for February is. Like I said, I think like for me, ooh, uh, the Ten of Pentacles came out. Very cool. The rabbits. Um, I'm realizing as I'm sitting here with you all that this month is going to be really powerful. I think like I kind of knew, but I didn't really know <laughs> until I sat down with you. I'm honestly excited though, because if you can engage with February's energy in a curious way where you're really 
wanting to get new perspectives on your future and get new perspectives and shed a skin and be comfortable that you've already become something else. The landscape's already changed. You're already on the boat toward another shore and getting used to that movement, the easier things are gonna be. And actually this month could be quite beautiful for you. So I am finding the Ten of Pentacles message in this book. It's a beautiful book, highly recommend. So The Rabbit the picture again some say i am lucky some consider me a pest but no one can argue about my ability to multiply rapidly there is a reason rabbits breed well like rabbits it is part of our survival no it is part of our legacy the more we create the more we have to share our gifts benefit not only us but those around us we all play our part in this physical world even if it means sometimes ending up as someone else's dinner. Pretty <laughs> intense close out to that message, right? But I think that's the other part of this, right? And I love that that message came up because what is one of the key ingredients of Leo's? Creativity. However you create, whether it's quietly hidden away in a little nook or you are a big personality out and about, Leos are very creative beings. That's part of the role we play in the ecosystem of energy is just to be highly creative. Let yourself play. Let yourself create. Let yourself daydream and vision and create through maybe those times where you are shedding a skin or where you're grieving something or where you're getting used to who you are now. Play and create the whole month. And the more you create, the more is coming to you, right? Um, and I don't mean, you know, just create in a place that feels good for you. It's not about being busybody. Cause like I said, rest and incorporation is really important. You're gonna wanna play in the ways that are fun for you, <laughs> actual play, right? Instead of play according to other people's rules. So whatever that is for you, if it's, Ch sidewalk chalk do it you know if it's poetry if it's um knitting if it's cooking if it's uh i don't know there's just so many ways to be creative in life that i can't even list them all here but that creativity is actually going to welcome in your next phase much more easily it's going to give birth to that so don't resist your own nature that way and have fun and maybe even let yourself explore aspects of your creativity that you haven't allowed yourself to explore for most of your life, right? Um, I am so excited to see what this month brings for all of my Leo tribe. We are obviously going to be doing the Mercury retrograde video over on Patreon, the moon activations, all of those beautiful activities we're gonna be doing over on Patreon. So if you'd like to join me, I would love to see you there. You can also find me on Instagram and on my Facebook, or on my, I don't have a Facebook actually, on my uh, website. So I'll leave all of those links in the description box for you so you know where to find me. And you can find Pink Loon's Gorgeous Jewelry on her Etsy shop, um, and I will leave her link below as well. I'm sending you all so much love, and we will continue this very potent time for Leo's uh, in March as we continue to navigate Piscean energy. I love you so much and I'll talk to you next month.